Welcome to this week's Eternal Monday, where Gardevoir takes on origin form Palkia V-Star. These games come from the finals of the March 2024 in real life Eternal Format tournament that took place here in San Antonio, Texas at Dragon's Lair at Alamo Ranch. If you're new here, you might be wondering what the heck even is the Eternal Format. In short, it is the unlimited format with a ban list. So this means the format features cards from the original base set all the way through to the most recent tournament legal set. Although it's an unofficial format, it's an incredibly fun format with a lot of rich deck building and gameplay experience to be had. If you're interested in learning more about the Eternal Format, you can do so at justinbasil.com eternal. Up first, we have Gardevoir. Gardevoir is a toolbox style deck. I talked about it in more detail last week, but just to go over the very basics, just like the version of Gardevoir that's about to rotate out of the standard format, you have Shining Arcana Gardevoir that does that big damage with Brainwave, but you also have access to Telepass Gardevoir to copy the effect of a supporter card out of your opponent's discard pile. You have the energy doubling Psychic Mirage Gardevoir that makes it so that it's easier for you to hit your numbers without heavily damaging your Pokemon. And you have Surprise Time Machine that lets you swap in and out of Gardevoir as you need. In short, Gardevoir is quite a toolbox in the Eternal format, and it has quite a few options to do what it needs to do. Up next, we have Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Origin Form Palkia V-Star is one of the more recent menaces in the Eternal format. It just has an incredible amount of consistency with a ridiculous amount of power that ultimately just threatens everything. Is it beatable? Absolutely. But is it a menace? Absolutely. So Origin Form Palkia V-Star, you're most likely familiar with from its time in the standard format. It does 60 damage plus 20 damage damage for each benched Pokemon, both yours and your opponents. So the damage racks up fairly quickly and you have access to Skyfield to make it so that both you and your opponent can have more than the usual five Pokemon on your bench. You can go up to eight, which means that Palkia's damage can be even larger. Similarly, with a smaller base damage, Suicune has the same sort of attack, doing 20 damage plus 20 more for each Pokemon on either player's bench. Damage adds up quite quickly. You also have access to Starmie to do big damage with its 50 times multiplier attack and Chen Pow to either do big damage or to just act as a means of getting energy out of your deck with its ability. As always, you have Lapras to search out your supporter cards from your deck to get things like Melanie or Irida as needed. And then Glacia's Stadium allows you to be a little less concerned about the lightning type threats that are running around because your water type Pokemon no longer have weakness. And finally, just a couple more cards worth highlighting. Aqua Patch allows you to attach a basic water energy from your discard pile to one of your water type Pokemon on your bench, helping you get powered up a little bit more quickly. And then, of course, there's Erica's Perfume, which, very similar to Captivating Pokepuff, allows you to put basic Pokemon from your opponent's hand directly onto their bench. So if they're avoiding benching their Pokemon to avoid giving you extra damage, you can force them onto the bench and ultimately make that damage a little higher. Anyway, that's both decks in the finals today. Let's look at the games. Now, most likely you're looking at the remaining runtime of this video and going... Dear God, what happened? Why did this end so quickly? Uh, we're going to find out very quickly here. Uh, game one will be over fairly shortly, and game two will also end fairly quickly. Uh, but let's look at how this sets up. So Palkia is here on the right. Suicune is down. Greninja is down. Squawkabilly is in the active spot. Looks like we're going to see a Squawk and Seize here fairly shortly. Did see a Floatstone go to that active Squawkabilly. See a Water Energy discarded off that Radiant Greninja, getting it into the discard pile. Not too shabby. We do see a Battle Compressor discarding one, two energy, two water energy, and a Glacia Stadium. Glacia Stadium, not useful. Player deciding just to thin it out of the deck, not have it in there anymore. Unfortunately, Gardevoir is not a Lightning-type Pokemon and doesn't have any Lightning-type Pokemon in the deck, so it's just not worth it. So might as well get it out of the deck. Up next, we have that Brooklet Hill. Brooklet Hill going to get that Origin Form Palkia V, getting it into play, getting it ready to go. Because once it can evolve up into Origin Form, Origin Form Palkia V-Star, it can be an even bigger threat. All right, we do see a double Aqua Patch, which, uh, yeah, you can see where this is going. Uh, double Aqua Patch, so that's, ooh, he didn't do it. That is interesting. So he's attaching, I would have, okay, interesting. So there was another Water Energy in hand, which is why that didn't happen. I was expecting a double Aqua Patch Manual attached to Greninja retreat out of it and just knock out the active. Although this is turn one going, f okay, that's what's up. I didn't realize it, and I should have already, but I didn't. Uh, Palkia went first, so he can't attack this turn. That does make a huge difference. Uh, game's nearly over already, but that's all the same. 
yes, it, it's it's fine. It's fine. So Palkia is still having their first turn. They are set up very well. They have two Palkia down. They have that Suicune down. They have the Greninja down. You can see the remnants of their original hand in the discard pile. That Melanie unable to be played on their first turn going first. So they've just discarded it with Squawk and Seize. So they've got a Battle Compressor there and they're using that to discard some more cards out of their deck. Looks like they got a, a couple more water energy and another compressor into the discard pile. Just kind of thinning down that deck a little bit. I do see a Crobat V in the hand. They can draw some cards off of Dark Asset. Dark Asset lets you draw until you have six cards in hand. There is a Quick Ball in hand, though, so they could thin further if they were going to do that. Player here having to weigh the decision of whether to put that Crobat down. Do they actually need the extra draw off of Dark Asset or not? I like that extra draw, but with them going first and it, with it being their first turn, they may have decided that it's just not worth it and they'll save it for the next turn. Is that a pass? That is indeed a pass. No Crobat. We're going to see our Gardevoir player plays down on a Zelf here. They're going to look through their prize cards, see what they want out of there. So Zelf lets you find a Pokemon in your prize cards and swap it with a card in your hand. I see, I see Secret Wonders, the, the Telepass Gardevoir in his hand there. And I do wonder if that's what he's going to be putting in to the prize cards. Just choosing to uh, dump that instead and hope that that's less useful at the moment. I'm not sure which Pokemon it was that was just pulled out of there. I want to say that's the Energy Dealer, the Psychic Mirage Gardevoir. I, I don't love that option. It does. It is very unfortunate that there's not a Ralt in there. Another Ralt would be super helpful at the moment. But it does look like that's the decision they've come to that... I believe that's that Energy Dealer Gardevoir that's gone into the hand there off of the Azelf, and they're choosing to put that Secret Wonders Guard of War in the prize cards again. They're currently second-guessing themselves, but yeah, they've confirmed it. All right, so they're going to put their prize cards back down. Azelf does not require you to put them down in the same order, so they're just going to kind of arrange them for future access attachment then to the active Ralts so they can use the Teleportation Burst Attack doing 10 damage and switching into that as elf on the bench. Looks like the Gardevoir player chose to make a quick use of Brooklyn Hill to search the deck before attacking here. We're gonna see a draw, looks like a water energy off the top deck there and an ev evolution into the origin form pocket V-Star. Star portal to attach three energy. There's gonna see a retreat on the Squawk Billy and Radiant Greninja comes with a double KO, both Ralts and his elf going down and we're going into game two already. That game was over very, very quickly. I only barely figured out what was happening before the game ended. <laughs> so here we go. Game two. I have to imagine that the uh, the Guard War player is going to go second again. Indeed, they don't want to be donked again if they can avoid it, but we'll see if they can avoid it. Uh, we see the Palkia come down right out of the gate. No Greninja just yet, so that threat's not alive just quite yet. The player here debating whether or not to attach a Water Energy to the Palkia, and they have chosen to do so. And they're going to squawk and seize, discarding the Ericus Perfume. Ericus Perfume, also not really helpful if you're trying to donk your opponent like this. If you can get the donk off, then Ericus Perfume just works against him. Normally, of course, with Palky, you want to build your bench, build your bench, and then force your opponent to have a big bench too, hence the perfume. Uh, but in this case, if you're just trying to donk them right out of the gate with Greninja, then there is no sense in playing it. You can just discard it. Uh, Battle Compressor, finding a couple of water energy and discarding them. Gonna fish out another card here. Looks like the Greninja is in the deck. It's not prized, so it is it is very much available to the Balka player here. The Glacia Stadium once again going into the discard pile in this matchup off of that Battle Compressor. The player saying, you know what? Nope, you can go. I don't need to draw into you at all for this game, so you're gonna go away. And indeed, it has gone away. See a little bit of a shuffle there. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. I'm curious how they're going to get the Greninja out. Oh, there's a Luxury Ball in hand. There's also a double double Aqua Patch again, it looks like. Okay, so there's an Aqua Patch on the Palkia. There's another Aqua Patch. I don't know. I, I don't know. I would have liked the Greninja threat, but obviously that's a big target. We do see an Iano. Okay, Iano coming down. Gonna shuffle both players' hands and put them on the bottom of their deck and then draw six cards. Ooh, so we do see a quick ball in here. So that's still an act that's still an out to that Radiant Greninja. And then there was an Ultra Ball in there to get the Origin Form Palkia V Star to get that powered up. So now we just have to see if the player can make this happen. And I do think they can. They're going to play a uh, quick ball first to get the Greninja, I have to imagine. Discarding, I believe that's a Zelf. 
Oh, we're going for Lapras? Going for a Lapras, it looks like. Lapras or Fione? Curious on the, on the Fione. Looks like they're going to choose to do the Ultra Ball at the same time here. Should just resolve this first, but... They are questioning their decision here. I don't know that I agree with a Fione. I don't know why you'd pull a Fione, except to discard it, which maybe they're going for. Okay, they're going to go for Lap... Yeah, they're going for Lapras. So Lapras is going to happen. We're going to see Support Navigation. Support Navigation finds Guzma. Okay, that's fine. Ultra Balling away a research, and I think that's a Field Blower. For the Palkia Vsar. So at this point, the only the only key piece we need to do a dunk here is the Greninja again. Because we have the double energy in discard. I'm sure there's an energy in hand. Are they not gonna go for it? They're not gonna go for it. See a second attachment on that Palkia V star. Oh, that hand is kind of garbage. Guzma. Just to knock out the Ralts in the active. Okay, so not a Greninja dunk this go around. They've survived a little longer. That's good. They do not, however, have a Ralts to evolve up. <laughs> They're making a little joke about how bad their hand is and how their bad their setup is. Unfortunately, even still, it's going to be a knockout on that active Azelf. Azelf, of course, can't actually evolve into Gardevoir despite the player's joke there. So, unfortunately, that's just a game for the Gardevoir player, which is really unfortunate because if you saw last week's play, Gardevoir was able to really show its stuff off. This week, however, uh, Palkia, just a little too oppressive for it. Couldn't quite build itself fast enough, couldn't quite build itself out fast enough to, to keep up with Palkia. Palkia just able to put that pressure on very, very quickly with Radiant Greninja especially. But even in that second game, literally just with the Palkia V-Star, immediately taking knockouts, turn two, uh, go, going second, so... Or going first, rather. It is what it is there. Um, all the same, Gardevoir is not a joke. Gardevoir is still quite a strong deck. It does have its its power. I do think it's rather unfortunate that Gardevoir really didn't hit a whole lot of um, of its like search cards to find stuff like Buddy Buddy Poffin and help build its bench out before Greninja could become a big threat. Unfortunately, that is randomness. That is sometimes what happens in the Pokemon trading card game. It is what it is. All the same, look forward to more Gardevoir in the future. I very much suspect that the Gardevoir player will continue to work on that list. As I've said in the past, they were developing it even right after the tournament. Uh, they were very, very excited to learn of Unknown E when my video on the getting started in the Eternal Format video went up. They're like, oh, why haven't I played that before? Um, so there are definitely some innovations to be made in Gardevoir and probably even in Palkia. Obviously, if you're going to play in an Eternal Format tournament, or if you're playing an Eternal Format deck against another player's Eternal Format deck, just for fun, maybe at home or with some friends, uh, these are some great starting points for your next build. If you happen to find yourself in the San Antonio area on April 6th, you can join us at Dragon's Lair at Alamo Ranch for the next In Real Life Eternal Format tournament. Registration and deck validation begin at 11 a.m. with round one scheduled to start at approximately noon. As always, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.